Alpha and Omega We worship you alone You are worthy to be praised You are Alpha and Omega We worship you alone You are worthy to be praised You are Alpha and Omega We worship you alone You are worthy to be I 
maisha yangu roho wa Mungu tawala roho wa Mungu
baba tunakuwa bundi baba tunakutukuza baba tawala baba makazi yetu baba tawala familia zetu baba tawala nafsi zetu baba tawala mioyo yetu baba tawala mfalme kanisa lako baba tawala jamii yako baba tawala taifa letu la Kenya tawala katika kila hali mfalme wa ajabu tunajiachilia mbele zako baba tukisema ni wewe tunayestahili baba chukua ushukani Jehova baba na ukatawale katika kila hali Jehova baba asante Jehova kwa sababu wewe ni mwaminifu uinuliwe mfalme wa mfalme asante baba asante kwa uwepo wako katika maisha yetu baba asante kwa ukuu wako Jehova baba unastahili Jehova pokea sifa na utukufu baba maana unatosha baba asante Jehova asante mfalme wa mfalme mighty redeemer the god who is all powerful the god who is great and mighty father no one compares to you none is besides you father father you are exalted above everything the god whom the mountains smell the god whom the sea dries because god you are mighty and great father have your way father bless the audience who will, who will receive this word father let this word heal let this word reform let this word encourage let this word rebuke for your own glory amen to our audience to our members wherever you are to our friends wherever you are receive greetings from new life church truly we miss you we long for those good times when we could meet when we could see each other face to face today I want to share a message from the book of Nahum chapter 1 verse 7 to verse 9. The message is a refuge in times of trouble. The one speaking is Pastor Belik Kidiavai. The Bible says the Lord is good. A refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. But with an overwhelming flood, he will make an end of Nineveh. He will pursue his foes into the realm of darkness. Whatever they whatever they plot against the Lord, he will bring to an end. Trouble will not come a second time. May God bless his word. The book of Nahum is a comforting book not only to the children of Judah but also to us who live in the modern age. This book pronounces judgment to the Assyrians who had oppressed the people of Judah for almost 100 years. The question I want to ask today How would you feel when you hear your enemy will finally be destroyed? Assyria was the most powerful and cruel nation on earth during that time. It was proud in its self-sufficiency and military power. Assyrian army was cruel it could skin its captives alive and hang their skin on poles to instill fear in those who would fight against it the assyrian army could split 
the womb of pregnant women, women, and dash their children on the floor. For a hundred years, the nation of Judah had been oppressed in such a manner. Most of them had lost hope and many of them were living in fear. And then Nahum comes with the word of hope that Nineveh will be destroyed. Remember a hundred years before the mighty evangelist Jonah had gone to this city unwillingly. And for three days, he proclaimed Nineveh will be destroyed in 40 days. The king of Nineveh pronounced a fast. And God had mercy on this nation. What a wonderful God he is. Truly, where there is Repentance, mercy is done. Nahum is a direct contrast of the book of Jonah. In Jonah, we see the mercies of God. Yet, in Nahum, we see the wrath of God. And this is the same God whom we serve today. The God who is the God of mercy, yet the God of wrath. Our God is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah, yet he is the Lamb who was slain on the cross. Nahum exposes us to the sovereignty and the character of God. God is a jealousy and avenging God. God is slow to anger, but mighty in power. God doesn't leave the guilty to go unpunished. God has the power to rebuke the sea, and it dries up. In the presence of the God, the mountains and the hills melt. Yet, yet, he is the God of mercy to them who trust in him. Nahum provides hope to believers who are oppressed just as he gave hope to the people of Judah. That our God, he is good. That our God, he is a refuge in times of trouble. That our God cares for those who trust in him. What a marvelous and a wonderful God he is. Nahum uses the word good to emphasize God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy for his people. Even as he exerts wrath upon his enemies. Ninevites are classified as the enemies of God. Since they were the enemies of the children of Israel. God tells Abraham, I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. In simple terms, God is telling Abraham, those who are your friends, those who speak well of you are my friends. And those who are your enemies, those who plan and speak evil against you are the enemies of God. This blessing wasn't only for Abraham, but also for us who are in Christ Jesus. Those who speak well and good towards the righteous are the friends of God. And those who plan and plot evil towards the people of God 
are the enemies of God. In Isaiah 43 verse 4, God assures the children of Israel that they are precious, honorable in his sight. And that he loves them to the level of exchanging people and nations for their lives. I want to tell you, those who are seated here, and even those who are watching this message via your phones, via your computers or TV, you are precious. You are honorable and loved by God. And that he values your life more than anything. The nation of Israel was oppressed by a physical enemy. But for us who are in Christ Jesus, our enemies are not physical, but spiritual forces in the air who plan and execute evil against believers and the rushers in Christ Jesus. Paul writes to us in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 that our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against authorities, powers of this dark world and evil forces in the heavenlies. Brothers and sisters, we can only wrestle with whatever has equal power or more powerful than us. You can't, you can't wrestle with a, with a lesser, something that has no equal power with you. If I find yourself wrestling with a cockroach or a chicken, you are in the wrong profession. You only wrestle with people or forces that, that are either greater or equal to your strength. Whatever comes to take away peace, joy, hope, freedom, and life from believers, that one is the enemy of God as well as the enemy of believers. In John 10.10, 10, a thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Oh, but he has come that we may have life and have it in full. And Paul writes that the last enemy to be conquered is death. I don't know what has been oppressing you. I don't know what has taken place during this period of corona. What has the enemy taken away from you this time of corona? Is it your peace? And you're always worried, not knowing what next is it your joy? You are always sad when you hear news how things are getting bad. Is it your hope? And you are in a hopeless situation since whatever your life was depending on has been taken away. Is it your freedom? You can't move freely to go anywhere else or freely to worship. This time, have you lost your friends and relatives due to the effects of corona? My brothers and sisters, we have an enemy within who has oppressed us just as Ninevites had oppressed the children of Israel. The sad thing is that we can't see this enemy, yet we are experiencing his effects. 
at this time? What can the righteous do? Nahum and King David in Psalms 9.9 gives us the solution by comforting us to run to God in times of trouble since our God is good. Since our God is a refuge to those who are oppressed. Since our God is a caring father for those who trust in him. Do you trust in God? And then you can run to him because he is your refuge. He says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Brothers and sisters, be encouraged. Be comforted that our God is good. You who is watching this message, yet you haven't given your life to Christ. God wants you to make a deliberate decision to allow him to take charge of your life. Your life is so precious to him that he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to be a ransom and to die on the cross that you may have life and life in abundance. Maybe you are there. Repeat this prayer after me. Lord, I come unto you. I recognize that I am a sinner. Forgive my sins and my evil ways. Lord, remove death from me and give me an everlasting life. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Let's all close our eyes. Our everlasting Father, we give thanks to you because you are our refuge in times of need. We thank you because through Isaiah 3, 10, you assure us that it shall be well with us in spite of the current opposition we are going through. Father, it shall be well with our health. Lord, it shall be well with our families. King of kings, it shall be well with our careers. Father, it shall be well with our businesses and our economy. King of kings, our Lord and Savior, it shall be well with our education system. It shall be well with the church and the, and the world all over. It shall be well with our economy and the world at large. Father, make a way where there seems to be no way. In his name, we pray and we believe. May the Lord keep you, be gracious to you, and make his face shine upon you, now and forevermore. Amen.